Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work by Composer X, it would have to be Work P. Well, Composer X has done us the great favor of writing his own Work P. That is, the one work that represents his style most typically and should be the only one to survive if the evil god Cancrazans destroys classical music as we know it, owing to the awfulness of the record labels and the way it's treated by the snootiness of its audiences, um, and and allows only one work per composer to survive. Well, the composer is Telemann, and you all nailed, I mean nailed, pegged the work P, which is his Toffel Musik. I have a typical example right here. This is Harnencourt's recording of Toffel Musik. Um, there are now quite a few, you know, maybe half a dozen floating around, which is really wonderful because this compendious oeuvre um, was as good as unknown um, until a few decades ago. And it, it, it's crazy that it was. I mean, it's Telemann's encyclopedic summary pedagogical tendency was every bit as voluminous and rich as Bach's. You know, when Bach did something, he like exhausted the possibilities of the genre. Well, Telemann did something quite similar. And German composers weren't doing things at the time. And there was a good reason for it. The reason was their absolutely chronic inferiority complex with respect to music from other places. You know, in the Baroque period, we were still sort of at the dawn of Western music getting getting itself formulated and and nationalism and and all of those things and that stuff starting to get you know, a bit more prominent. And the land of music was Italy. That was the exemplar where you had all those wonderful Baroque composers writing billions of concertos and oratorios and cantatas and, you know, the Scarlatti family and, and you had Stradivarius and Guarnerius and all those people building string instruments and Cristofori inventing the piano. And it was, it was the, the lodestone of music. The language of music was Italian. It still is to a large degree. The best singers came from Italy. I mean, it was the the heart of, of Western musical fabrication and pedagogy and aesthetics. And so, you know, German composers were at a big disadvantage. In fact, there's a very famous, famous comment by Empress Maria Theresa, um, or Maria Theresia, I don't know which one it is. It's, it's one of those, the, one of those Maria Empress things in, in Vienna, where she's talking about hiring like Mozart. And she says, ah, oh, those German composers, they just suck. I like the least of the Italian composers better than the best of the German composers. The reason, of course, was that the Italian composers were more simple, more tuneful, more vocally oriented, more entertaining. And so... And so that was that was the state of being. The other great, you know, competitive country was France. France, of course, had its own language of Baroque music, its own stylistics, and France had a big advantage over Germany because France, politically speaking, was unified and centralized from oh about the 16th century on, 17th century, somewhere in there. And so, and so French culture was a unified thing. German culture was a mess. Germany was a mess. Germany, German speaking lands, there was no Germany, was a bunch of kingdoms and duchies and things. The old Holy Roman Empire was all cut up into billions of pieces. It had no political unity. And because it had no political unity, that meant that the people who patronized the arts, the serious arts, you know, the aristocracy, there was no unified language or aesthetic either. And so what German composers tried to do was bring it all together in one grand synthesis. Now, this they succeeded in doing because they had geniuses like Bach and Handel and Telemann, who was the third in that big trio. Telemann's view of music was perhaps the most comprehensive of all of them. He put together zillions of concertos and suites and other things programmatic works where he tried to incorporate a bit of everything from everywhere. And Tafelmusik 
is a wonderful example of that. It really is. Excuse me. Now, Tafel Musik also doesn't just take musical styles from other places. It takes musical forms. The complete work, which is what this is, consists of three productions. It takes four discs. It's like four hours of music. It's been ridiculed. Telemann generally has been ridiculed because he used the word table music. You know, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to eat dinner and ignore it, which is nonsense, of course. It was music that was meant to be performed in aristocratic homes. And if you've ever seen an aristocratic home, you would know that the dining room is about the size of a concert hall. And that's where a lot of stuff would happen with lots of people. So it was as good as saying concert music. It's the same thing with Bach. No one ever dumps on Bach because he called most of his best keyboard music, including the Goldberg variations, part of his clavier ubung, which just means keyboard practice, practice pieces, you know, and that's some of the greatest music ever written. Well, Telemann's Tafel music is exactly the same. It doesn't deserve to be spat upon because of the title. And each, let, let me just tell you how it's set up. It's marvelous. So it comes in three productions, all right? Each production starts with an overture and suite, followed by a quartet, a concerto, a trio, a solo sonata, and a conclusion. So you get the entire history of Baroque instrumental music in one handy work done three times. And each production features different solo instruments. For example, production one is two flutes, strings, and continuo. Um, and so the quartet is flute, oboe, violin, and continuo. By the way, when we say quartet, you may have noticed there were three solo instruments. That's because the continuo is the fourth. The bass line is always the, the last voice. Because in Baroque music, it doesn't matter how many instruments you have playing. What matters is how many voices they play, how many parts. And so a quartet has three solos on top and a bass line on the bottom, four parts. And the concerto is for flute, violin, and strings. The trio is for two violins and continuo, bass line. The solo is for flute and bass line. And the conclusion is for the full ensemble. Production number two is for oboe, trumpet, and strings. The quartet is for two flutes, recorder, and continuo. The concerto is for three violins, strings, and continuo. The trio is for flute, oboe, and continuo. And the solo is for violin. It's a violin sonata. And then the conclusion is for oboe, trumpet, and strings. Once again, the flutes take a pause. The third production um, is for two oboes, strings, and continuo. The quartet is for flute, violin, cello, and continuo. The concerto is for two trumpets, strings, and continuo. The trio is for two flutes and continuo. And the solo is for oboe and continuo, while the conclusion is for, again, two oboe, strings, and continuo, the original ensemble. I mean, what a cool setup. And you can play, of course, as much of it as you want. There's, and, you know, depending on how long dinner lasts, it's really entertainment, you know, like while you're eating. I mean, you could do it while you're eating, I suppose. Though, presumably, you're talking while you're eating, so you don't want to be interrupted by music. But they, you, you know, you do it after dinner. You do it before dinner. You do it between courses. You do it during dessert. It's just there. First class music. And that's what matters. You know, Telemann wrote so much music that he routinely gets gets dismissed as somebody who just wrote, 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 wrote. I mean, I could have talked about, for example, oh, I have some pieces of it here. This thing. This is the Harmonischer Gottesdienst. 75 solo cantatas for the entire liturgical year. I mean, he wrote like a thousand cantatas. No one knows. You know, but the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is that Telemann's music is routinely dismissed by people who haven't heard it. And in fact, there is no way that the people who are so dismissive of Telemann have bothered to listen to most of what's available these days. They heard one piece. They said, ah, it was boring. I didn't care. All of his music sucks. I mean, that's so stupid. 
ignorant, but there's a lot of that in this biz because you need to listen first, always, before you make up your mind. And this is just a wonderful, wonderful work. Now, there was another possibility, actually. It was the Paris Quartets, another big series of chamber works. But those are all, of course, quartets. And so I, I think that this, the variety of this really sort of sets Telemann apart and, and makes him a special and wonderful composer. And if only one work had to survive, it would have to be what you said from the very beginning, Tafelmusik. But who knows what other gems are waiting to be uncovered in Telemann's legacy. I mean, CPO's series of all the wind concertos, all the concertos for multiple instruments, it's just fabulous music and tons of it. Absolute tons of it, joyful, tuneful, interesting, sometimes exotic, fabulously imaginative music. So there we go, friends. Keep on listening. That's the key. Take care.